what do you think it's going to take for the Jays to defeat this team in the, in a season series? Hello! And welcome to Blue Jays Today, where we always have something to say about the Blue Jays. I'm your host, Nicholas Playlog. And I'm your host, Adam Peddle. And today... Instead of talking about the Jays, we're going to be talking about the Yankees, the New York Yankees, the division rivals, the evil empire, the team that we've got to take down this year with our new recruits ready to take down those evil Yankees. Just kidding. If you're, if you're a Yankees fan, we love you. You know, Best of luck to you, but we're going to take them down. <laughs> Subscribe and like. <laughs> Subscribe and like. <laughs> but yes, we want, to, we want to ask the question, you know. Will the Yankees lineup be better than I line up? Are they going to be dangerous down the line? Is Stanton and Judge actually going to be healthy this year? We're going to talk all about that. But before we get into it, guys, make sure to like, subscribe, comment down below, do all that jazz. And as well, if you like sports betting, make sure to use our promo code today, Jays, on Monkey Knife Fight. You can get up to, I believe it's 100% back, up to $50 mm -hmm. on your first deposit at using our code today, Jays, and you'll seriously help out the podcast. And... Baseball's coming up, so get ready to place those bets. Well, not only that, they can also win a jersey, too. Ooh, right? right? Uh, so if you guys <laughs> if you guys enter now and you do it before opening day, then you'll be entered to win a Blue Jays jersey of your choosing, um, which is really cool, man. So, really, really uh, so cool. definitely, definitely be doing yeah. that. Just make sure to DM us your Monkey Knife Fight name, the name that you sign up with, uh, just so that we can get that similarity. DM us on our, on our Instagram account. That's all in the description down below. Yeah. Yeah, man. All so right. let's talk Yanks. This is uh, I'm actually pretty excited for this video. I feel yeah. I'm excited for this video because, yeah. um, you know, we've talked a lot about Jays. We've talked about our lineup. We've talked about our rotation. Oh, so much. I feel like that was the big topic after George Springer. It's like, all right, look, we got to get a starting rotation mm -hmm, now. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Yanks, we haven't talked about. But we have not talked about the Yanks. So I say let's take this step by step. Yeah. Let's talk about that lineup because mm -hmm. when you think about the Yankees, I feel like those, like the, the faces of Aaron Judge and Stanton mm -hmm. and DJ and Voight, yeah. it's like they're just, they're imprinted on me and, I'm, yep. and it makes me nervous. So it, it does. So should I be nervous about this? Well, yeah. Um, however, if you're going to go tit for tat with Blue Jays and, and Yankees lineup, you know, I think we have a we have a better chance because years before it was like Yankees lineup, our lineup, you know, especially 2018, 2019, they crushed us uh, in the first half of 2019 at least. But now, obviously, 2021, we have all these new recruits with George Springer and Marcus Semyon and guys like guys like Grichik being pushed to the bench. You know, potentially, you know, he's he's supposed to be playing every day since Charlie Montoya. But the thing is, now we have crazy depth that can actually go tit for tat. You know, all the way down the lineup of the Yankees, where we have batters and sluggers everywhere. So should you be worried? Well, let's talk about it. Uh, let's, well, okay. let's break it down position the, by position. The way we? the way that I look at that, I do like that actually. Yeah. I do want to yeah. do that. Um, before we say that though, one thing, the word that came that kept coming back to me with this lineup and our lineup was that the Yankees are proven in my mind. Yeah. I yeah. feel like that is the word. And so I wanted to I wanted to follow that train of thought. I wanted to follow that train of thinking. Mm. And I looked at all of their starting uh, lineup and mm. our starting lineup, and I averaged out and and to find the collective OPS career wise career, okay. of their team and our team. I think our team is really good. Yeah, our team absolutely. is pretty stacked. Yeah, and I think our lineup should be considered elite. And our lineup has a collective OPS of seven ninety seven. Nice. Which is actually nice. very, very respectable. Yeah. Anything yeah. above 800, and you're talking about a pretty elite player. Yeah. The Yankees, however, and, and this is where I think that they edge us out a little bit, um, and, and their question marks aren't as big question marks as we have. I don't know if this is the best in the league, but it's got to be fucking close. Uh, 831. That's pretty good. Career That's collective really good. OPS yeah. on these guys. That's really good. That's really good. That is really good. Um, yeah. No, I, I, I hear what you're saying. Like, we definitely have a lot of younger guys that are not as proven. Whereas, like, you know, you pretty much look at, like, the top half of their lineup and a little bit more and it's like these are guys who have been it been there done that they've proven it they've won batting titles they've gotten 
million, I was going to say millions of home runs. They, they've led the league in home runs at times, um, had rookies of the year seasons. So it's a lot. It's pretty scary. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I did want to go like position by position and kind of yeah. like, you know, you know, match guys up and, and talk about it because, uh, um, you know, it's a lot closer if you if you kind of go, you know, that way. You know, I, I what so what I did is I, you know, I went catcher, you know, second base, first base, everyone matched up. So let's start with the catching position right now. Uh, Sanchez and Higgy is what they have uh, currently in New York. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we have Kirk and Jansen. Now, Sanchez, I like two years ago, I would have said definitely Sanchez. San, like they would have had the, the edge over us. But now Sanchez is questionable in his ability to stay consistent. And now they're kind of doing a split role over there. And now that we have this guy, Kirk, coming up, who also had an RBI today in spring training. Nice. Um, you know, and they're splitting time with Jansen, who's good behind the dish. I don't know. I, I feel like it's. I would almost say it's even. I can't say it. Is it just because of Sanchez's home I, runs? I just well, it's just here's the thing, man. Like Kirk has had uh, 23 at bats last year. Right. That's his whole career. Right. And when we're talking about players who struggled, and we've always we've come back to this. 2020 was a shortened season. 2020 was a shortened season. Sanchez was god awful. There's no yeah. doubt about it. He was really bad. But Christian Yelich hit for like a 200 average last year. You right. know, I'm not saying that Sanchez is Christian Yelich, but this guy has a career OPS of 8.23. Okay. For a catching position, I just I don't think um, that we can say that the Blue Jays are there yet, considering that Danny Jansen, the only one out of the two who has been there for a long time, I have all their career OPSs, so I know mm-hmm. um, 668 on that guy. Yeah, no, he, he's not a he's not a slug. He's more of a behind the dish, like consistent team leader kind of player. Yeah. Um, where Sanchez is bombs. <laughs> he hits bombs. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, you're, I I gave them like an equal just because the upside is I feel like we have a little bit more upside in that spot where, you know, because it's just the prospect with, with Kirk. I think Kirk's got way more upside. Maybe. I, I don't know, man, because Sanchez has the upside of, of hitting like 35 bombs. You yeah. Know? I think Kirk's got the upside of hitting being a great just overall hit. I do think he know? could be very good. I just I think like when we're talking about. Yeah, and I, I I will I will give it to the Yankees on this one. Okay, I, I think okay. that they have to be better at the catching position. I, I gave them a bit of an equal, but I see what you're saying that Sanchez has already proven and done that. Let's see what happens this year. And now going to first base is Voight Vladdy. I gotta give it to Voight. Me just too. because it's I mean he literally had the league in home runs last year. Yeah. He's way more proven. Done deal. LeMahieu Simeon, LeMahieu. Done deal. You. Done deal. You know what's fucked? They had, uh, and this is why I'm scared of them, bro. They had the leader in home runs last year, and they also had the batting champ. Yeah. You want to talk literally. about having a literally. mixture of power and contact? Mm-hmm. You can't do any better than that. No, it was amazing. Yeah, and like this year, it's going to be absolutely no different. Mm-hmm. Um, pretty much. Know, I, have a, I have a bet on Voight leading the league in home runs, actually. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's pretty good. Um, and now, this one, I think we win. Torres and Bichette. I think, I think it's Bichette. I think it's just Torres. Think, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know I, mean? I will give it to I will give it to Bo Bichette. Torres one, did yeah. have a good full season in 2019 where he had like 30 plus bombs. However, I just think Bichette has way more upside. Yeah. You know, no, he's, I, he's got big time upside. Yeah. No. I th- I think I think we can say we can say Bichette on this yeah. one. I don't think we need to go too deep into that. Mm-hmm. Now this one I found was really interesting. Urshela and Biggio. Who would you say just initially off the top of your head? Like who do you think is like. Uh, well, better, okay, here's you know? the thing. I know Biggio's number is like the back of my hand, bro. Yeah, um, but Urshela. I also know Urshela's numbers, and I know that over the last two years, he has been very dominant. Very, He has very been very, good. very dominant very um, good. in the last two years. So I... Yeah, like in 2020, he had a 315 expected batting yeah, average. Yeah, like that know. That's insane. But And so I, I wanted to go a little bit deeper. So I looked at their wars, and they're very, very similar. They actually had the exact same war last year at 2.1. And in 2019, granted, Biggio came up a little bit later. Actually, no, I think they had a roughly around the same games. Uh, Urshela had a 3.9 war, and Biggio had a 3.1. So it's too well, even to call. I do honestly. I, I feel like I have to give it to Urshela just a little bit yeah. because I feel like, as an overall hitter, yeah. he is better. You know, like I, I, yeah. I'm sure that Biggio's on base percentage is probably a bit higher. Yeah, it is. But I, I mean, like Urshela could very easily hit 285 with a over 500 slugging. I don't think that we can say that about Biggio. Yeah, I think uh, Biggio. Um, I think Biggio's his his. 
OPS boost comes from his on base, yes. whereas whereas Urshela comes from his bat or slugging. Uh, so that that's the that's the main difference there. But I, I gave them about I, I said they're about even just because like Biggio also still has only played like two seasons, but they've played almost like two full. Like it, they're very similar when you really look at it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then going over to the outfield, I think we have a bit of an advantage here. Uh, Frazier Guriel. I think I, I'll give it to Guriel. Yeah, I'll definitely yeah. give it to Guriel on that one. Hicks Springer. Springer. Springer so over Hicks. Sprick, Springer over Hicks. Uh, judge, and I put to you slash Gritch, it's Judge, I would say. Judge, yeah, you know? no question. No no question about it. And then in the DH spot, Stanton or Rowdy? Stanton. It's Stanton. Stanton. So when you, do, when you do tally it up, I'll count yours in two. You know, the Yankees won five of those categories, uh, and we won three and split one with Urshela and Biggio. So... I mean, they are slightly outdoing us, but we can go a little bit tit for tat there. Yeah, I do. Yeah, it's closer, bro. It's just yeah. I think that this team it really comes down to their lineup, anyways. Injuries. Yeah, injuries, that's injuries, injuries, be it. man. That's because be it. um, you know, Judge and Stanton have the potential to be MVPs. Absolutely. They could win MVP at any given moment, and the question is, can they stay healthy? Um, yeah. Something that's very promising that I've heard out of uh, Yankee camp, um, promising for them, not promising for us, <laughs> is that these guys have started a new workout routine and that yeah. they are trying to to work in more flexibility and less of the, uh, 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 look, I'm a powerful muscle man, <laughs> and more of the like, mm, like I am strong, but yeah. also flexible. Yeah, I mean, you, I remember in 2019, like they obviously get injured in a bunch of places, but one of the big ones was Judge strained his oblique. Like if you're straining your oblique as a batter, that's what that's the part that's being stretched out probably the most out of any muscle. Bro, and you do that, you can't hit. It means it's too hit. tight. It yeah, means it's, it's too, too tight. tight. It's way too tight. You're gonna with that because you have that much weight moving that fast with mm-hmm. something that isn't as limber. You're gonna pull it. You're yeah. gonna rip that shit. Yeah, and I'm glad. You know, I'm glad for the Yankees, not for us. Uh, and Judge, I'm glad for Judge and, and Stanton that they actually are starting to do those workouts because they are big giants, and big giants need to be like like a bow and be all stretchy. And yeah, you know, you well, know. and also too, like I I want to see Aaron Judge. Like I mean, like yeah. uh, like for the good of baseball, for the good of baseball. And then like let's face it, like I know he plays on like what what is I guess our least favorite team, but you know he is an elite elite talent, and he's mm-hmm. getting wasted on the injured yeah. reserve. So. So it is sad. I kind of, I do really hope for the Yankee sake and for him and baseball in general that he can stick it together and have a full season. And I think that if both of those guys stay healthy for the whole year, it's like it's hard not to look at this lineup and say that this, like this, could very easily be the best lineup in baseball when you look at it, if all of these guys are healthy. So yeah. that's definitely something, man. Mm-hmm. Um, did you look at all at the rotation? Of the uh, I did not look at that the rotation. Okay, please let's talk about it. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll bring up a couple. I know of I know like they're they're guys. you know roughly I know roughly you know roughly guys. bro. Um, so uh, it is a little bit. It's also a bit worrying, and I feel like mm. it's very similar to the lineup. Um, it, it is relatively proven. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they are dealing with injuries on that side of the baseball as well. Um, they don't have that problem with Garrett Cole. No, uh, he could. Uh, and again, you know, he could be the best pitcher in baseball. Yeah. Next year um, easily. you know you, you could even argue he is right now if not definitely top three so that's a rock right there yeah Corey kluber um from the years of 2014 to 2018 was dominant bro so young like, award winner two time amazing two times incredible and then he really hasn't done anything at all since 2018 and that's because of the injuries man so mm-hmm. um once again like he is be reportedly uh from uh you know like manager of the yankees looking good yeah doing good stuff yeah can I mean, he stay on the field i mean i think obviously you can't you can't predict injuries you know i was able to predict injuries with stanton and judge but this year i you know based on the workout routine i think that my prediction isn't as strong yeah kluber not too sure about what he's doing to counteract his injuries or you know what exactly do you know exactly what his injury was um oh jesus i think i wrote it down and then um oh no i did not write it down Uh, yeah either way it's like we, we you know either way with um with with Kluber, it's like if he does stay healthy, which in a reality I can fully see that happening. Mm-hmm. And if he does, and you know that kind of sucks for us again because that's a solid solid guy that you just added for a decent price. You know, my thing for him is uh is watch the Grapefruit League starts. 
Right. Watch the Grapefruit League starts. I know that, you know, we can't put so much weight on them, but if, if you're watching them and you're seeing, okay, like this guy is hitting his spots, like he's looking good, he has the velocity, mm-hmm. then I, I really do think that he could easily return to form, you yeah. know, because, um, I mean, he's elite. Yeah. Uh, they also uh, got uh, Jamison Ty- Tyone. Tyone, that's Tyone. how you say it, Tyone, cool. Really excited about that guy, he, yeah. he's a sleeper. Well, elite in 2019. Yeah. I didn't realize how elite he was in 2019. Yeah. yeah. Fucking 3.2 ERA. He was really freaking good. Yeah. Man. You know, and and this guy is like, I feel like I just forgot about him because, you know, he did have a bit of a rough 2020. But and he was he, on the Pirates, so you, we all forgot about that. Exactly, right? It's like, I almost forgive him, you know? Yeah. But he put up a 3.2 ERA on yeah. the Pirates as well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I mean, something to be worried about. And then they have a couple like uh, Jordan Montgomery and uh, Domingo uh, German. Both of them younger guys. Both of them breakout potentials. And then also Luis Severino as well. Now, he's going to start on the injured reserve. Yeah. Um, but I also didn't realize that how kind of proven he was, too. In 2017 and 2018, he was, like, right up there as being one of the best pitchers in the league, uh, looking at his numbers. And they were dominant. Um, so kind of the similar deal as Corey Kluber. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's, Minus the Cy Youngs. Minus the Cy yeah. Youngs. But when you look at the number, like, they're, they're actually, like, the numbers that he put up and the numbers that Kluber put up. They're similar. Very, very similar. Right. Um, you know, obviously did it for a shorter period of time, two years to Kluber's, like, four or five. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, I mean, once again, one of those guys that could return from Tommy John and, uh, and and just do really well. So, I really think that this whole Yankees roster very easily could yeah. be the best in baseball if they can stay off if of the If they're healthy, we're, we're, we're going to have to fight. Because if they're healthy, what we're going to have to do as Jays is we're going to have to outperform ourselves. We're going to have to overperform. We're going to have to have pitchers in the bullpen step up. Guys like Anthony K. We have to have guys like Anthony K. break out and, and steal a starting role away from like a Roark. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And and because if Roark doesn't put up like... You know, we need to replace him if if guys like uh, like if the Yankees are all healthy and performing as they should. Yeah. So it's going to be tough, man. Like, what do you think? I mean, I I just think that they've built their team very well because and honestly, shout out to the Yankees. When you look at our our old guys in our in our pitching staff, like Ray and like Rourke and Ryu, Ryu's kind of old. Ryu too, yeah. I mean, but Ryu's still in it. Ryu's yeah, still yeah, in yeah, it yeah, right yeah. now. Um, I feel like Rourke and Ray, they their upside, their ceiling is capped. It is. Whereas Corey Kluber's ceiling, their one old guy in this mix of pitching, yeah, it's like his ceiling is literally Cy Young, and he's because he's proven it before, right? You know, and that that's the and that's the difference between their lineup. It's like they have guys who have proven it, just need to stay healthy. That's their whole story. We've done it before. We just got to stay healthy. Where it's us, it's we've actually never done it but we're being told that we can yeah so. and, and i think also too the difference is like because i know rourke we've talked about like he has had some good years in the past right it's just right. like the difference between him and kluber is well well kluber the only reason he hasn't been doing that is because he literally has been injured like right. he was elite and then immediately injured and what's your excuse rourke you don't have one. Like, you've you been playing, one. bro. Like, you don't you've have one, man. Bad. You should be, well, you should be better. But, like, obviously, Kluber's, like, way better. Uh, Kluber's yeah. better. Uh, who knows? Maybe this year. I don't know. Yeah, I mean. Who, who do you think does better this year, Kluber or Rourke? <laughs> <laughs> Gee, I don't Over know. Over under. Who, who yeah. has the better ERA? Absolutely, Corey Kluber. I would yeah, go Corey I'll, Kluber I'll, all day I'll, and all night, that. man. Yeah. <laughs> I would do it. Yeah. I mean, it just, it seems like I really, yeah. I, the more that mm. I did research into these guys, the more that I like their team makeup. Yo, one thing about Aaron Hicks too. I know that his average isn't there, so but, he, but he's like their Biggio. Oh, he's yeah, like their Biggio. Yeah, absolutely. I didn't even know that. No, he's, he's just solid. He's solid. Roto champ has him predicting him going the third spot in the lineup, which is interesting because third hitters are usually, you know, they got a mix up of power mm-hmm. and, and contact, but he's just on base guys. So I, I, I don't know. I guess they just, I mean, he's, they want more, they want him to see more at bats and split up Judge and Stanton, but who knows what their lineup's going to be this year. I, change, I kind of understand it if you have, because after that, you literally have, and this is what it's so amazing about the, mm-hmm. the Yankees lineup is right after that, you have Stanton and Voight and Torres. Yeah, right. I, and it, like those guys are all three of them probably going to mash over 30 home runs. Um, yeah. You know, they're going to have crazy RBI numbers, probably all of them. It's like if this guy can just get on base, I'm, I'm, 
there's a good chance that I can bat yeah. him in. I, I mean, that's the name of the game, Moneyball. Get on base, on base, on base. Yeah. You know, if and, you uh, can get on base, then you can score runs and you can win ball games. That's literally the name of the game. So. No kidding. So after looking at this, um, mm -hmm. how do you feel about, about your prediction? I think we, bo we both said mm -hmm. that they were over 100 wins. Yeah. I think if they stay healthy and they have some breakouts and Kluber comes back and maybe Torres can come back to 2019 and yeah, and, oh, Frazier can get full time at bats. I think so. Uh, I think they can win 100 ball games, and I know people were calling us crazy that they, that we predicted them winning no, 100 ball games. No. Guys, that's very doable for a club like this with this kind of makeup. Like, especially like I know they're face they're in a tough tough division, but when you're the best team in the division, like it's not that tough anymore. It is tough. Right? If you put them in the, in the NL Central, like obviously they're gonna sl like slap everyone around and win like 110 games, but. They're better than everyone. Yeah, they're, you know, arguably, are they better than the Mets? They're not going to play the Mets that much, but like, are they? You know, are they are, are better than the Mets? They could be. I think that they're better than the you Mets. Know, Mets. I think the Mets have a better rotation, um, definitely. Uh, whereas they have a much much scarier lineup. I mean, I think that. Uh you know, I mean, I don't know if it's as definite without Noah Syndergaard because I would look mm. at Carrasco and Kluber as very similar players right. in the sense that, you know, came off of a year not playing. Both have been good. Uh, you know, I think that Garrett Cole and Jacob deGrom, very similar players are often regarded as one and two in the league. Um, and then I know that they have like Strowman and they got Walker. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, I, I really, I, I mean, I think that uh, Tyon, Tyon, Tyon. Uh, really could be elite. And uh, yeah, if, if Tyon hits, then yeah, then it's like starting to look a little more closer. It's mm -hmm. just it's just the question marks. If the question marks become exclamation points yeah. uh, or periods, then yes. Yeah, I, I, I do think. Uh, right I know. I, I like that. I like that. Uh, that grammar system. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. I do expect a lot of these guys to turn into into quite a. Uh, Excellent. Not question marks, exclamation Excellent. points. Yes. And uh, in Frazier, bro, like I think that Frazier could really, be an exclamation. I really like too. Frazier. Really interesting about him. He's actually literally played 162 games. Yeah, I heard that on the uh, on the initial broadcast. Yeah, right. And so his his slash line in that is 258. 331 in a 475 slugging, you know, not amazing. It's actually pretty good. Not like pop off the page like you're an all star. You're batting in the third part of the lineup, but he's solid for literally what's projected to be their seventh hitter. Well, and that is literally one of their worst hitters there. Like that's yeah. the line that you just read off. That's one of their worst. That's one of their worst hitters. If you don't count Sanchez or Higgy. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, 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 and I think that's just also crazy to me is that, you know, I know that Sanchez was God awful, but that's only one season removed from yeah, being yeah. like like a very good with the um, home runs with the home runs you know yeah it's like could he easily bounce back and and slap like fucking 25 30 dingers i mean i could see it yeah um and then you also have urshela who's just decided in the last two years that like oh like hey guys here i am yeah i know yeah. i used to play for the jays but uh, like fuck you guys uh, now i'm gonna be a leech over oh here my God. i always hear it all the time on like Yankees podcast or Yankees broadcast are like, oh, we're so glad we just got this guy for like nothing. And I'm like, ah. Oh. That's their eighth hitter. <laughs> yeah, I know. Their eighth, their hitter. eighth hitter is arguably the same as one of our cornerstone young prospects. We're well, not a prospect anymore, but Kevin Biggio. Like, arguably better. Arguably better than Kevin Biggio. Sorry for those Kevin Biggio fans are there, but look up his numbers. They are literally identical in war. Uh, they're just different player yeah. makeups. And in the last two seasons, he's had an OPS right around 890, which right. is, uh, you That's know, uh, Bo Bichette's career OPS is 896. So yeah. you want to talk about, like, it's yeah, it, it, it's it's yeah. it's upsetting. And it's, it's upsetting it's that not, we lost this. It's guy. not even that he's getting lucky too. He's expected to do this stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like sorry, sorry, Blue Jay fans that might be hurt by that, but like. I was kind of hurt by it too, <laughs> so I had to face the reality. Yeah, yeah, and you know, um, DJ LeMahieu's career OPS—it's actually dragging it down. You know, Urshela's career OPS is 7.53, and that's like one of the—that's literally uh, the second worst on this lineup. Uh, Urshela? Yeah, Urshela. That's yeah. career because right. it's only—he's only breaking out right now. DJ right. LeMahieu, the batting champ, has a 7.87 OPS. Yeah. He—the last three years, it hasn't even been anywhere close to that. He's been like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Elite, elite, elite. So yeah, I mean, you're playing in Yankee Stadium now, and he's having some of his best, like, uh, batting. That's just best stuff, years, batting, you, know? you know. Just literally the best, the best years. years for him. Um, so. Yeah, damn no, it's it. It's a, it's a fucking good team. It's a good team. It's a good team. Uh, 
you know, what you know, I kind of said it before, but what do you think it's going to take for the Jays to defeat this team in the, in a season series? What do you think it's going to need? We're going to need. Uh, well, you never want to wish injuries on anyone, right? Right. But uh, but honestly, I, I feel like if we want any chance of winning this division. I, I would say that um, we kind of have to have like these guys can't all be healthy at the same time. Right. Um, or, or or like we need to have like five, six, seven breakouts across yeah, the board. Yeah. We need like three guys in our bullpen to be unreal. Yeah. We need like two or three like starters to st- uh, suddenly start becoming like top. Vlad has yeah, to. Vlad's got to break T.O. Out. has to continue. T.O. Rowdy probably. Rowdy's got to break out. Um, uh, we would need like someone from our bullpen to take a starting role, like Kay. Uh, Pearson's got to break out. Healthy Bo Bichette. Healthy Bo Bichette. We got to have Springer do Springer. Uh, we got to have Ryu still being Ryu. Ray's got to bounce back. <laughs> yeah. If all <laughs> of those things happen, if all of those things happen, then yes, we can yes, beat this team. I think we have a chance. Yeah. Yeah. I agree, but, uh, but not right now. Guys, mm-hmm. let us know what you think in the comments down below about the Yankees and their entire roster. Uh, I also learned, sadly, that they have some insane prospect coming soon oh, called the Martian. I don't even want to think about yeah, that Yeah, he guy. looks like a madman. Oh. Like, he looks like, like Judge 2.0. Yeah, well, <laughs> he, I saw a picture of him when he was 17. This guy's bigger than I will ever be. Yeah, big, um, yeah, well, how tall is he? I don't know height. I'm just looking at, like, shoulders, back, oh, wow. like... He, he looks sure. like he looks like Judge, um, but yeah, he's uh, he's gonna mash. But uh, let us know what you think about uh, these guys in the comments, please. Yes, and guys, you can also check us out on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Anchor Radio, Public, and Breaker. You can also check us out as uh, out on our Instagram, Twitter, uh, as well as our TikTok. You can check us out there. We're posting on there too. Uh, and also, guys, Monkey Knife Fight promo code today, Jays. If you enter the promo code again, you can win a Blue Jays jersey of your choice. You just got to message us on, on, on Instagram, DM us, what is your monkey knife fight name so that we can sync them up. And if you win, any choice of Blue Jays jersey. That's awesome. I wish I had that choice. And guys, who would you choose? Who would I choose? Hmm. Okay. Oh, I've always wanted the, I've always wanted the Nate Pearson. I'm just like, I'm waiting for him to become good. Mm. You know what I mean? To become confirmed because... I, if he beca- if he can become like that ace, like he's gonna be around for a while, so I would I would want him. Maybe it's the purchasing of his jersey that will pre- that will launch You're him, right. bro. Like You're that right. faith, that instilled faith that you You're have. Right. Guys, might give it to him. Guys, you got it now. You guys got to get Pearson. Guys, <laughs> you got to get Pearson. <laughs> We're changing it. Yeah, it's just a Pearson jersey because we need him to be good. <laughs> We've said it here. <laughs> Nate Pearson's watching. Like you're right. You're right. I can do it. I can do it. Someone believes in me. <laughs> Absolutely. And guys, oh, relevant to we're having like like we're going live on that. It's like an audio like kind of live. And you can just listen to us talk and chat and chill. We're going to do that, you know, every so often, every week or so. So join us on there. Shout out to uh, to Tristan Morgan. Always. Oh, yeah. Always hanging out with us on relevant. Also, yeah. guys, actually shout out to Tristan Morgan as well. His YouTube video that he just put out. He made a hype oh, video. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't Blue seen Jays. it, but I've got the notification. I gotta watch it after. Justin. I watched it, man. It's it? pretty hype. Nice. It's pretty fucking nice. hype. You know, nice. I was feeling the juices flowing okay. when I saw that. So check that out, guys. We'll awesome. put it in the uh, we'll put it in the description. Yeah, absolutely, guys. And thank you so much for watching. And go Jays, go.